Welcome everyone to sort of the AMA with New Order. Uh, so my name is Lawrence. I'm currently working the business development team here at Perpetual Protocol. And with us from New Order, we have Eden and we have Sammy. So uh, can you, why don't you guys like introduce yourselves for the people? Yeah, what's up guys? Um, I'm Sammy. I do like strategy, ecosystem development and stuff with the New Order project. Um, previously, it was more focused on like the research side of things. Helped out with a few DeFi projects, layer ones, research firms, etc. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Hey guys, uh, it's Eden. Uh, I've been in the uh, early stage venture development um, space for you know. Uh, over 10 years, got into crypto in 2015. Um, have spent most of my time in crypto as partner and head of crypto at Outlier Ventures. And now, you know, excited to launch um, New Order. Yeah, awesome. And I think the first question is like, what is New Order and sort of what do you guys do? Sure. So, New Order. Yeah, you you want me to jump in, Sammy? Yeah, you take that one. Yeah, sure. So, New Order is a community-led venture DAO, um, and so if you look at the space today, you know you you'll I think everybody could recognize there's a, a just a tremendous amount of capital in the space, and if you ask DeFi builders in particular what they're looking for, you know, capital is not at the top of their list, right? And so they're looking at how do we bootstrap liquidity? How do we bootstrap uh, community? And how do I work with somebody that's going to provide me resources to actually like, you know, build my network, build my app? Um, and so we put together a uh, new order. It's a... Um, it's it's not an investment DAO, it's actually an incubation DAO. And so we're sort of aligning ourselves a lot more um, with, with DeFi builders uh, and other protocols versus, um, you know, VCs and trading firms. Um, you know, New Order on a day-to-day -day basis is, will be, you know, uh, building alongside other teams, other founders, uh, other projects, and so that includes, you know, smart contract development, token engineering, um, and you know, even just financial engineering, and then a, a slew of other sort of, uh, you know, activities around like how do we launch, um, you know, new DeFi projects. Um, the other thing about New Order that I think is, you know, I think important to understand is that we're open and permissionless. Uh, if you look at most venture DAOs today. Uh, they're actually, you know, just closed groups of, you know, investors. And so New Order is a, um, it's a venture DAO that is uh, basically open to anyone who wants to participate. There's a variety of ways to participate to, you know, whether it's building alongside us, whether it's staking liquidity. Um, and so um, it's a venture DAO that is, that is meant to be, um you know to support uh defi builders and and actually sort of you know i think you know with our community kind of carve out what is the next sort of era or generation of defi and and start uh, start to launch those type of projects yeah awesome and i think this sort of goes nicely into sort of the next question is what sort of projects does new order incubate uh, it seems like a, it seems like they're sort of mostly DeFi, but I'm um, just so sort of curious as well. I would say um, <clears throat> the thesis will evolve like as the DAO gets bigger and as the DAO sees more opportunities. Um, I think with the pre-incubated DApps that we put out there, um, we're really honed in on the DeFi narrative, um, actually like, exclusively DeFi. Um, that includes like, you know, whether that's multi-chain or that's incorporating aspects of like artificial intelligence or machine intelligence into the smart contract logic. But, um, I'd say like, you know, most of the things we're focused on right now is, um, <clears throat> DeFi exclusive. Uh, we had like some really dope talks with like our community and stuff. And I think, you know, the plan is to one day or eventually after we expand to get into 
you know, who knows, metaverse stuff, NFT stuff, fashion stuff, anything really. Um, but I think the goal, like for day one and maybe even the first few months, will be sticking to the DeFi narrative. Yeah, that sort of makes sense. And sort of to expand that a little bit, with the current projects you are incubating right now, what are some of the things that get you sort of most excited about each of the projects you are currently incubating? Uh, could be like future use cases or like what they're trying to do now or yeah, just anything that sort of gets you really excited. Yeah, I mean, all our projects are super dope. Um, I think actually like what excites us the most is this concept of like um, like an ecosystem as a service, right? where you know like we're sort of building them all under one family where you know like traditionally dApps sort of like come out and then they're out on their own like hunting for integrations and stuff like this whereas you know we have like three dApps right now that we're like officially incubating that you know like if they were to just come out by themselves they'd sort of just be out there like you know hunting for stuff um but what really excites us is like the potential collaboration between the incubated dApps and then all the different money Legos we can throw in there post launch, right? With the other stuff we launch, right? So, you know, between like our, our <clears throat> Olympus play, we can mix it with the yield optimizer we're launching. And then we have a stable coin coming out. And then, you know, obviously like uh, us and Perp, like we decided to partner up today because we have like a lot of cool, like derivative stuff um, in the works that is powered by like Perp. So, you know, like, I think what interests us more is actually the opportunity for collaboration within the ecosystem and sort of like building off each other's backs and um, really getting like the, the, the flywheels going there. Yeah, definitely. That, that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, it's definitely really interesting to see how does like all of these projects are currently incubating and how they all sort of like, uh, sort of connect with each other and sort of like really work on that composability. Um, and so the next question I sort of had was, what is the process of actually being incubated by new order and how does someone apply? Yeah, so right now, like the the way it worked was we were working on like these pre-incubated dApps, um, like Optify, like Redacted and stuff that we sort of built out as like a core team just to really like uh, showcase our thesis and like show the world like we're here to build like really cool stuff. Um, in post-launch, we have a venture management like sub DAO for the contributors that want to get involved and it'll be up to them and generally the greater DAO itself to like do the due diligence process on projects and um, you know, invite them into the incubator and get them rolling, right? Generally how it works when projects come in is we have a few different paths, right? So there's one path in the sense where you just apply through our website right now that's like pretty backlogged with stuff post launch. I think there's like 40 to 50 projects waiting for a response from us if we should incubate them. And then we have, you know, like an accelerator program we're launching with Outlier Ventures, uh, which will push in projects that are looking to do raises and stuff. And then, you know, just like creating alignments <clears throat> like we did today with Perp, where we're partnering with other DeFi protocols and layer ones and stuff, that creates like a whole new route where like other DAOs can come to us and tell us what they need built on top of them. So we have like a, a few funnels for pushing projects in and then, you know, like a pretty decentralized open process for, you know, accepting them and getting them rolling. I think, I think another thing that that's probably worth mentioning is that we want to be building a community, um, you know, that's going to be making, um, you know, d data driven, um, researched decisions, right? And so in order to do that, I mean, Sammy mentioned, yes, we have our venture, you know, sub DAO, um, and they'll be putting together, um, you know, a thesis. Um, they'll be doing research, due diligence, and those will be sort of crafting, you know, you could say the pitch, um, the nuts and bolts around why, you know, w what is positive and what is, you know, maybe like a, a disadvantage of a particular opportunity or project, right? I think the the other thing that we we want to integrate into this process is is working with partner projects, right? Working with our ecosystem to actually build that due diligence and that research to kind of help make uh, our community, um, you know, help help them make informed decisions when it comes to, you know, what it is that we should be building, 
and you know a variety of sort of ideas along the way in terms of like venture building as well yeah that, that sounds like that sounds really awesome actually um and that's pretty crazy that you already have such a huge backlog of projects that are sort of waiting to um be incubated by the new order DAO. And I sort of wanted to expand that a little bit. Um, I think you guys already briefly explained uh, some of the things you sort of do, but for projects that maybe haven't really heard of New Order, like what are some of the things you guys do to help them succeed? So, you know, it's a wide range of um, resources, right? I think, uh, again, like we, we are not an investment DAO. We're an incubation DAO. We're not deploying capital. We're deploying resources, and so those resources come, you know, in the form of um, you know smart contract development, um, token engineering, uh, financial engineering, um, not just security audits, but like you know, I think we have the the capabilities of providing economic audits, um, and so um, you know, beyond that, I think it's also you know, we're, we're sort of creating this, um, this intersection of communities, right? I think Sammy mentioned that, that, you know, we're trying to provide this, like this ecosystem, right, as a service. And so um, I think with each project that we launch, we're going to have sort of overlap, overlapping community. Um, and that should provide, you know, network effects for, for, for for adoption it should be able to provide you know uh i think greater liquidity over time as well so so there's a variety of ways where we come in and and you could say like build alongside teams um and then i think probably another you know, other important thing is you know what i had previously mentioned is you know who are the right sort of partners right um in our ecosystem to kind of come in and support a particular project as well right like how can we sort of like inject like community um inject um the right innovations alongside um you know whatever that opportunity opportunity might be yeah perfect um i think I think you guys also briefly touched on this as well as like how the community could get involved. So you could either, so it seems like you can sort of get involved in the sub DAO or sort of help build alongside these projects that are being incubated by the, by the order. And so I just wanted to ask how can the community contribute and get involved? Um, yeah, I think you guys briefly touched on it, but are there any other ways as well? Yeah, I would say, you know, like there's, two ways to get involved right one if you're if you have a DeFi idea and you sort of need the resources to get to mainnet like uh that's like one way that we like that's like one path that like you know we really value um you know like founders with ideas and stuff like that and then i guess like the second side of it would be um <clears throat> if you're someone who's potentially new to web3 looking to get more involved with web3 uh whatever the case is like you want a job in web3 I'd say like, you know, there's there's tons of different ways to get involved with the projects we're launching. And, you know, with an incubated project, part of incubation is sourcing talent, right? So, you know, like that means that not only does do, do we need help with our doubt, but there's constantly going to be new projects like popping up that, you know, we have pretty ambitious goals. You know, we want to launch like upwards of 15 projects a year, right? So um, there's plenty of opportunities to get involved with that, whatever DeFi or DAO project you like that we're launching um, beyond just like, you know, helping us within our DAO, right? You can imagine our DAO is more like a platform um, rather than like something that needs to constantly be maintained and um, yeah. Yeah, perfect. That, that makes actually a lot of sense. And that sounds like, seems like a really, really interesting sort of, um, yeah, way to sort of get the community involved. And really it's sort of open to like all avenues of crypto and, um, people that maybe aren't really familiar with crypto. And I sort of wanted to go next into something that you guys also briefly touched on that I found really interesting. Um, what is the DAP marketplace that you guys are building and how is it used in the New Order ecosystem? So with all, with these projects that we're going to be launching, one of the, one of our strategies is to 
uh, develop products with with each of these projects where we could populate into a new order um, into a new order marketplace, right? And so the idea here is that new order can be a platform, right? Not just a um, not just an incubator, but a platform where users can come, they could deposit their assets, use whatever services, sort of you know get a new user experience and discover you know uh, a variety of products from the projects that we've uh, launched. And so again, what that should help is with, with what that should help with is um, sort of discovery, um, building network effects, being this sort of intersection of, of a variety of communities. And so you know, I think it's going to be very advantageous for our projects in that sense. And then in terms of our our DAO, right, we're going to be launching a lot of early stage projects. So we want to diversify our treasury, right? We don't want it all to be in this sort of high risk, high, um, you know, high potential, but high risk sort of category, right? So by having this marketplace, we'll be able to sort of generate revenues um, in stable coins, in uh, large cap tokens. And so that should provide us um, with some really good uh, opportunities to diversify our, our DAO treasury, which should be good for our DAO as a whole. Yeah, awesome. That, that makes like that makes perfect sense, actually. And I sort of wanted to go next into what sort of the utility or the what is the utility of the new order token? I think you guys are doing a token launch like really soon, December the 9th on MISO. So just for the people that sort of unaware, what does the new order token do and like, what can you do with it? But the token, it's like an interesting one, right? Like, you know, to most people they think, you know, it's just a, to most people they think it's just a governance token, right? And I think with lots of DAOs, like, a lot of the time these tokens are just governance tokens. Um, this project has like a pretty unique value accrual mechanism built into it where, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously one, the token acts is like this TGA, this token gated access to the DAO and to all the early stage projects we're launching. But secondly, you know, like there's um, significant allocations of the projects that we are launching um, that get pushed back to the DAO's treasury, hence like increasing the value of like the, new world token right so if you're staking you know you get access to like all the different projects that we are launching their tokens and stuff and i think like just greater access to the ecosystem as a whole right like as you can imagine <clears throat> incubated project tokens will launch like you know new use cases for this governance token and and stuff like that yeah that, that actually makes sense and i think actually i wanted to sort of briefly ask what sort of like what are the projects that you guys are currently incubating right now? So you mentioned yeah. that you're currently sort of incubating three dApps. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think I previously mentioned that, you know, part of, um, it's not a formal process, but I think part of the process that we want to undertake in launching a pro any, you know, a lot of our projects is, is actually going out into the ecosystem and seeing how we can kind of you know mobilize sort of um you pull in you know other communities to get behind a particular project and so you know h2o is a really good example um of this strategy so h2o is a stable coin that we're building that is going to be backed by uh data tokens um data we're very long on data as an asset class and so we see this as sort of a um an, a really good sort of first opportunity to get into this you know intersection of DeFi and and data and so h2o as i, as I said it's a stable coin that will be backed by data tokens uh we've partnered with ocean um which is building a data marketplace um, and, and H2O will act as a medium of exchange in the ocean data marketplace as sort of its first use case. We're utilizing, um, you know, some of the RI mechanisms, um, for this stable coin. And so we've partnered with Reflex to kind of 
develop um, the mechanics around this stable coin. And so by partnering with Ocean, by partnering with Reflexer, right, we're not just launching sort of a project, you know, kind of, you could say, without any momentum uh, or community. Uh, this project's going to go out. It's going to go out with a very uh, specific use case. Um, we think it'll develop into, all, you know, all sorts of use cases. Um, but to be able to kind of go out, have a specific use case, have not one, or, you know, ha have not but one, but actually three communities that are sort of involved here, I think kind of gives this a lot of momentum. And so that's a really good example of how we want to roll out projects. And that's that's sort of one of the three projects that we're launching. The th there's another project that we are launching that's called Optify. And so Optify is, I think, uh, a really good example of how we see uh, the importance of injecting uh, machine intelligence into DeFi. And so just like you see in the capital markets, you know, the need for uh, data optimization to kind yeah. of find that alpha in that system. Uh, Optify is similarly you applying machine intelligence um, you know, uh, to provide the best yield for a particular asset in real time. And so it's a intelligent multi-chain yield optimizer that is being built across a number of protocols and is building a community of pe uh, basically of, of people that are building adapters to kind of increase the machine intelligence uh, on this protocol. And so that's that second project. Sammy, you could probably talk about Redacted. <clears throat> yeah, Redacted is um, the third project. It's um, an aligned fork uh, with Olympus. Uh, so for those who are familiar with the Olympus model, it's, um, yeah, it, it's similar to the, the, right, the reflex relationship where it's a protocol aligned fork, which focuses in more on influential governance tokens like CRV and CVX rather than stable coins like Olympus focuses on. And that's sort of going to be our vehicle we use to venture off into the curve wars and the, the whole um, narrative of DeFi 2.0 and bonding and stuff like that. So that's a third project. Yeah, awesome. I, I definitely see some like really interesting use cases just for like all those projects in sort of broader DeFi and then like in sort of like in a multi-chain future. And I sort of wanted to touch on that. So I think you guys really put an emphasis on multi-chain within the new order DAO. And so what are your sort of thoughts on the importance of the, like living in a multi-chain sort of uh, ecosystem? And then, yeah, like why do you guys so like put so much emphasis in multi-chain within the new order? Well, I think I think multi-chain is sort of the default now. Um, I think it. I think you know, just in general, you know, in DeFi, you're just not gonna. I think you're just gonna see users are not gonna care too much, uh, if at all, over time where a DAP is living, whether it's on Ethereum or you know or some other network. And so, uh, you know, if you look at some of the other, a lot of the other layer ones, they're accruing quite a bit of uh, TVL now, uh, quite a bit of like, uh, you know, quite sizable liquidity on those networks. And so, you know, it's just increasingly going to become important to be deploying on a number of chains where, you know, there's other communities with, you know, it could, which could have, you know, I think unique values uh, in their own right, but but to be sort of accessible to those communities and and uh, the liquidity on those those other chains. So in just in general, I just think that's just a sort of like the default sort of gravitation that's kind of happening right now. I think you know beyond that, I mean, we do think that there's probably going to be some interesting sort of um, uh, strategies, even technologies around cross chain bridges that could sort of. Uh, help develop um, some some interesting DApps that are uniquely multi-chain. Um, but I would say that our thesis is kind of evolving over time. It's 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 not. I wouldn't say it's anchored around multi-chain. I think we've mentioned machine intelligence. 
And I think we're also really bullish on um, DeFi expanding to new digital asset classes. So we talked about data tokens a little bit, but um, you know we see DeFi expanding to gaming, to metaverses, to mimetic assets, and um, and you know we've we've actually partnered with Outlier Ventures, um, which you which a lot of people are probably aware um, is the leading Web three accelerator in the space. We've partnered with them to kind of um, well to establish their first DeFi accelerator. And uh, the goal there is to actually um, uncover DeFi projects that can be applied or DeFi that can be applied to um, metaverses and NFTs um, and, you know, something that we're sort of coining as MetaFi. And, um, you know, what we want to establish there with Outlier Ventures is, uh, you know, is basically sort of almost creating this category and and launching you know 40 projects over the next two years so it's it's i think a pretty exciting proposition for those that want to expand DeFi, those that are sort of in different categories and have ideas around how to apply DeFi there um you know that's something that's uh, i think worth noting so all in all i think our thesis is like very much sort of expanding and you know the community and our sort of venture sub now are going to continue to to kind of help this evolve. Yeah, perfect. I, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And this is sort of the last question for me, and then it'll sort of be opened up to the audience to ask questions. So if you want to ask questions, just raise your hand or just put your question in the new order AMA questions section. So my question is, what are some of the things you guys are most excited for regarding the future of new order? <clears throat> you want me to go first? I have, yeah, I, have yeah. a, I have a few things, but I'll I'll limit it. Um, well, one, the token sale is coming up on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> we've been grinding this project out for months and months. Feels like years in the DeFi space now. Um, really been getting everything ready for launch. Built out a super dope team, and we're excited to like you know finally start like decentralizing this thing and get the tokens in all you guys' hands. So I'd say like the most exciting thing in the short term is the token sale. I'd say the second thing right after that is launching the one incubated projects, and then two the incubator, right? So really launching that first project that was like completely community driven and had nothing to do with the core team. I think that's like what I look forward to the most in the long term. I think for me. What's exciting is I think we see New Order becoming this sort of um, community that's this sort of this living organism that's connected to a number of other communities. Um, you know, I think as Sammy mentioned, uh, Redacted, uh, one of the projects we're going to launch is a approved sub DAO of Olympus. Um, H2O is the medium of exchange in Ocean. Um, you know, Optify is building these adap adapters for its yield aggregator across many chains. So I just, I can see more sub DAOs, more integrations that, that basically, you know, with our products, um, that, that get, um, you know, that builds this sort of interoperability into, into new order and it all will probably end up merging into our marketplace, right? Ultimately. So, so I think that's really exciting because I think as time goes on, like I could see New Order really having like a like a very very strong, um, tangible relationship with many projects. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that that definitely sounds really exciting, and I'm really excited to see sort of the launch of the incubator projects and then sort of the launch of like the incubator itself and sort of like where everything goes from the token sale on Thursday. Absolutely. And so we have our first question from the, the audience is it's from Sin, Sinic Zero. And he's asked, May have already answered this, but how does New Order continue to stay active and involved with incubated projects post-launch? So 
we've kind of got a uh, a model that is a bit of a hybrid model. Um, you could think of it as a co found uh, community as a co founder model, right? And so, you know, uh, you can imagine teams come build with us, we help them launch, but then we have um, either like let's call it like uh, some a CTO in residence or an entrepreneur in residence that would maybe potentially graduate on with those projects. And then we have sort of like, you could almost say like uh, some, some operating members that are participating in uh, sort of the core development of these projects. Um, I've mentioned the marketplace where projects can basically, you know, and communities will basically intersect. Uh, that's one, I think, key way that we want to stay involved in, in basically helping drive adoption and uh, building TVL. Um, I think, you know, th and then I think there's always going to be an ongoing um, sort of innovation, um, you know, with with whatever's we, whatever we launch, I think we'll always be thinking, how can we you know, maybe couple some of these innovations together and create something new, right? Um, and so that's, that, that's I think, you know, uh, something that we'll sort of always sort of, we'll try to integrate into the, the culture of our community as well, right? How do we continually sort of give back to our, our projects? Yeah, that makes sense. And so we have now we have a question from Sebastian who was asked, um, talking about cross-chain interoperability, any thoughts on UTXO-based chains? Sammy, I'll leave that one for you. Can you repeat that, sorry? Yeah, sure. So Sebastian's asked, talking about cross-chain interoperability, any thoughts on UTXO-based chains? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to build, like, really on, on everything, right? Whether that comes from EVM chains, non-EVM chains, uh, ZK rollups, optimistic rollups. Um, we're really, like, focusing on every single, like, option possible. I think, like, one thing we've really looked at hard recently, based on the projects that have been applying, has been, like, parachains. Um, so that doesn't even limit us building on top of chains, but rather even building new layer ones themselves. Right? I mean, like, really, it's not limited to anything at all. And I don't want to speak on behalf of the entire DAO and say, like, what we, what, like, we are focused on. But, like, you know, like, we're, we're not limited to anything, um, any sort of chain. Yeah. We're very non-tribal. I think our, our, one of our goals is to create a multi-protocol community, right? And so um, I, I think there will be certain... Uh, DeFi services that make sense on, you know, let's say like Solana versus like another chain. And so those things will be sort of taken into account, I think, by our community in that sense. But in terms of like focusing on any specific chain, I, I don't think that's, that's definitely not going to be something, uh, you know, like a, a priority of ours. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And that's definitely like really interesting to see how that sort of uh, how that sort of play out. And then we have a question from Shogun who's asked, with having an output rate of 15 projects a year, what is the plan to ensure the integrity of these projects are maintained throughout the incubation and post incubation? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um... I mean, I think I don't think net fifteen is necessarily the year one goal. Um, uh, I think what we want to do is launch projects that um, that are actually solving problems and uh, launch projects that are are sort of you know highly community driven and highly community backed. You know, with those examples that I've provided before with Olympus, with Reflexer, with Ocean. So yeah, there is a sort of commitment to quality. You could say we don't want to be this sort of like launch factory and just putting junk out into the world, right? Um, I think we will be very, very meticulous in sort of maintaining, um, you could say, the 
the the quality and the viability and the sort of the the, the high potential of projects, right? Um, in terms of just building scale, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we partnered with Outlier Ventures, right? The We really have two sort of um, ways that we're, two parts or two strategies for our venture platform, right? It is the, string, the, the strategic incubation that we've been talking about. But with Outlier, where it's an accelerator program, right? And so the accelerator program will give us... Um, just a lot more scale in the sense that we're able to launch a lot more projects but those projects will be like won't be as hands-on for us right those are to kind of get behind projects that are looking to get to market and almost like utilize our network our um um you know some of our resources but but to basically like get them to market quickly and efficiently so those projects we won't be incubating, we'll be working with them and supporting them through the accelerator. That'll provide us the scale while the, the, the actual incubation will be something that will be very, very, um, you know, on a case by case basis, we'll sort of, I think as a community, uh, trying to keep it a very high quality. Yeah, perfect. I think you guys, might have already touched on this question before and it's from figgy who's asked will new order venture into the metaverse yeah um most certainly we will um again like we will be launching with outlier ventures the first DeFi base camp uh accelerator uh and a lot of the focus will be on metafi not exclusively but we will be on metafi and so, you know, we don't, of course, it'll be very interesting to see what comes, um, you know, what applications come in there. But yeah, most certainly we expect, you know, DeFi to be applied to metaverses, to gaming, um, you know, meme, memetic assets. It, it should be really interesting. Yeah, it definitely sounds really, really interesting, actually. And really interesting to see what sort of metafi projects um sort of go through new order and i definitely wanted to see how the metafi space sort of evolves in the future uh so i think shogun also has another question who's asked what sort of partnership has been arranged between new order and perp and i guess i could briefly also touch on this as well uh, so i guess behind the scenes we've been sort of talking with new order um and sort of like getting to know some of the projects you guys incubated and a lot of them that are currently being now granted out also have come through New Order as well. So it just definitely made sense to sort of have some sort of partnership between New Order because I think the projects that you guys are incubating are really interesting and they definitely seems like a lot of them could have a really good fit in the perpetual protocol ecosystem. And so it also helps build out that ecosystem you guys are talking about as well. And I don't know if you guys had anything to sort of uh, add to that as well. Yeah, like I said, like, you know, I think the stuff we're building, like the people, the projects that have been coming to us are like, <clears throat> I mean, one of them, I don't think we've announced it yet. One of them straight up said like, they're just a money Lego built on top of Perp. And we are like, okay, we got to connect with these guys because this was like the fourth project that's like we've talked to that said they're looking at building in like the perpetual and derivative space, right? And I think Perp is obviously like the number one solution there. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we've been talking and sharing projects between each other for some some months now and i think it just makes sense today to do that treasury swap because we obviously have the signal that like you know people are building on top of perpetual and then i think perpetual in their efforts to build out their grants program education initiatives their incubation initiatives um <clears throat> you know it makes sense to get more involved in our governance right which is why I think like, you know, it was kind of like a no brainer to do the, the treasury swap so that like we can actually turn this relationship into something on chain, which is something that like, you know, we want to do with a lot more protocols instead of just like, you know, talking on Telegram and stuff like that as we launch this DAO. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, like having that sort of like on chain sort of partnership there is definitely those really signals to the community that uh, we're very much sort of willing to like help each other in like the long term and yeah it's just a very obvious fit to sort of partner with open uh new order and i have a question sort of uh 
as well. When it comes to the sort of venture sub DAO that you guys are sort of opening, how will that sort of work when it comes to being a part of that sub DAO? And if it's already been decided, how can people sort of maybe eventually get into that sort of venture sub DAO within the order? So there's a number of sub DAOs, um, you know, that that are set up at New Order, ranging from <clears throat> community building to treasury management, um, and then of course you know uh, this uh, uh, venture sub DAO. And so you could just come to our Discord, introduce yourself, and um, you know we we are sort of in the middle of like basically starting these sub DAO committees and starting some of this work. Um, you know as as you know we're launching on. Uh, Thursday. And so uh, a lot of this is just kicking off. So if you are interested in, you know, um, you know, over, whether it's venture, whether it's treasury management, um, or, or any other area, and you're interested in your order, you, I, we do invite you to come to our discord. And um, you can be a part of any number of those sub DAOs. In general, uh, just, you know, if we're talking about venture, the venture sub DAO and uh, specifically, I mean, it is good in, a, you know, I think w w we do want people who kind of are able to apply their, ex you know, experience, their skills to to the, 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 the specific sort of uh, domains, right? And so if you've had uh, venture experience previously, um, you know, or you're, you, I would say, or you're just very sharp with in terms of like understanding, like, how you think uh, DeFi is going to evolve, and you've got some really interesting, like an, a really interesting investment thesis. Um, then, yeah, certainly um, we're we will want you to participate into our community. Um, you know, very much looking for like you know the smartest sort of builders and strategists. Yeah, that definitely makes sense, and. It's definitely really interesting to see how all the different sub DAOs sort of evolve within New Order and sort of how it sort of goes into that sort of election process for the DAOs. Um, so we have a question from Lee and he's asked, how do you scout and vet new projects? Is it a stand is there a standard process or is it more organic? Yeah, I think there's some basic requirements, you know, like um, we don't want them to just be like valueless projects we'd want them to be in line with our community um <clears throat> you know i think there's like obviously those standard processes in place um but you know it, it's really not up to us like we're not the ones deciding um whether a project would be a good fit or not right that's really up to the token holders and like the communities from you know again we're talking about the venture sub down here but you know that would really be up to them right um <clears throat> if we think that like there's a value out there if we think like you know if there was actually like a conversation going in there like a few days ago about one of the projects that like came in through the discord or whatever and the question that came up first which i thought was super interesting more than like what it does and all these things is like where does this fit in like our ecosystem considering like the pre-incubated dApps and like the direction that the dao already sort of wants to head down with like this metify stuff and while it was like a good idea for adapt like the questions they've been asking is like do we have any integrations here you know can we increase the utility of all the other projects without you know like like does it make sense to put resources here if it's going to be like a one off thing right if it doesn't really fit into like what we're building so you know it's a, it's like some pretty interesting convos that are going on right now in terms of like this dd process and what decentralized dd even looks like right um yeah, I mean, we're not the ones deciding again, right? So it's, it's completely up to the DAO and like, again, like some more appointed committee members within the DAO from the venture team. Um, but yeah. We will create, you know, we will create frameworks, right? For the community to kind of um, develop the, the right type of uh, data and analysis, you know, for them to, to, to you know, to basically uh, consume and make decisions upon, right? So, you know, we probably will create like some sort of like DD framework that sort of examines, like, you know, whatever, you know, the I guess the technical aspect or the financial engineering uh, examine the the token economics, um, 
you know, you know, variety of aspects um, of a project and sort of just kind of have like some sort of template, you could say, you know, as a DD doc, let's call it, um, that could be used uh, as a framework uh, over and over again. And generally, I think we want to be able to kind of like inspire like data driven, maybe quantitative sort of um, arguments, um, you know, you know, for a project. And so we'll 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 work hard and sort of like establishing that for for our DAO. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And so we actually have a follow up question from Lee, who's asked, you mentioned your DAO treasury, besides the debt marketplace, where do funds come from? Uh, so I guess like the fairest answer there would be that like, you know, we are not like accepting, like, you know, it's not like accredited investors or LPing or something into us. Rather, the way that revenue is generated from, is from the incubated projects, um, their tokens, um, leveraging the stable coins which we get from the public sale. Um, yeah, I mean, like, there's a few different ways, right? But it's all um, like a pretty permissionless, the same way like other dApps generate their revenue. Like, you know, some of the incubated projects we talk to, like we're doing like rev shares there instead of token supply and really creating like a very diversified revenue um coming into the DAO that hopefully is like you know major caps and stable coins and stuff like that that we can use to like fund operations and like initial bootstrapping of projects um, but we want it to be a very agile treasury that's able to like quickly pounce on opportunities in the market um <clears throat> and like boots and like leverage and grow the treasury that way rather than you know like creating up like prop funds or whatever the case is that like you know seeded and stuff Definitely makes sense. So that's, I think it sort of leads nicely to the next question from the audience. I think both Shogun and Lee asked a very similar question. Um, so how can the community get involved with the new order token sale and what method are you guys using to launch the new order token? So we're uh, doing our token sale on Sushi's Miso platform and we we are doing a Dutch auction. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Dutch auction, there's a sort of a uh, a max and a min price that's established, and then the price declines over time. And so, um, I guess just in general, uh, the advantage of bidding early is that you're more like you know you're 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 more likely to uh, acquire the token. Uh, the advantage of uh, bidding later is that you're you will be bidding at a lower price, but the tokens may not necessarily be available uh, at a lower price because those who bid it at the higher price will, well, well, they've allocated uh, their funds before you did, and you've established a lower price for them, and they'll they'll basically take up more tokens. So. Um, so it's really a matter of kind of, there's a little bit of strategy there, but in general, um, you know, it's a fair method in sort of establishing a price, um, you know, through the market, uh, the market establishes the price. And so, um, you know, we're, I guess we're very excited, uh, on Thursday for just for us to come out and launch. And then I guess, uh, secondly, uh, you know, to have, um, you know, basically the community um, support us and start to sort of participate and use this governance token to help us guide um, this sort of, um, you know, this incubation DAO. Awesome. And then we just have a follow up question from Lee is asked, is the MISO launch on Ethereum mainnet? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it will be. The, so the initial TGE will be on Ethereum, but I mean, we've talked with Bridges. And we're going to quickly scale out to, you know, multiple different chains and stuff. People, projects that we've partnered with. Um, so I mean, if, even if you miss the TGE event, it's not like we're exclusively staying on Ethereum. Like we'll quickly be on all your favorite chains. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. awesome. And actually, I, know, I had another question, and I'm not sure if you guys are able to answer it right now or not. Um, so with the new order token, you guys said that that will sort of give you gated like access to different projects you guys are incubating. And I just wanted to ask, does the new order token sort of give you access to the projects you're incubating right now, or is it just for mainly just for future projects? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, like, yeah, it does. It does because like this project is the first one coming to mainnet. And then I think Redacted will be the first one after that, shortly after launch. And then, yeah, so I guess that would be true. Yeah, the token would act as like a TGA for all of the projects we're incubating, even the ones that we've announced prior to this style coming out. Yeah, awesome. And then we have another question from Lee who's asked, so far, so far you've mentioned accelerators, incubators, and also funding slash VCs. Can you summarize the difference between all these? Yep, yeah, certainly. So yeah, I mean, those are the three ways it, it just in general that, that you can, um, uh, you know, what's called quote unquote uh, the venturing, right? Like that's how you, um, how you can basically um, initiate a, a project, right? Uh, or get involved. Uh, as an external party. So it's through investment, incubation, acceleration. And so we're not investing. Uh, we're not deploying capital and investing. Um, incubation is very hands-on work um, and involves a lot of building. That's kind of primarily like what, what we will be doing as a community is basically, you know, all that work around, um, you know, building, um, launching, um, you know, not just a network, but a community, right? Uh, and so uh, incubation is kind of hard work. It takes kind of, you know, it's a lot more day-to-day. -day. It's, um, you're, you're really putting in, you know, uh, like the, the sweat equity, you could say, uh, as opposed to investment capital, right? Um, and so that's why, you know, when it comes to incubation, you know, I think more... I think we probably look somewhere in the order of like, you know, 10 to 15 projects per year, um, but probably on the lower end in the first year, right? And it's because like, it's a very involved process. Now, acceleration is basically, um, it's basically a program, like a three month program that's put together where, um it's a lot more business support than it is technical support. And it's basically to help projects sort of fast track to launch, helping them with network, helping them with legal compliance, um, helping them with exchanges, with token economics, with mentors, uh, maybe with business opportunities, partnership opportunities. And we would be basically creating uh, a cohort of eight to 10 projects that would go through this three-month pro uh, program and then finish off with a demo day. These projects would get funded, actually, through this accelerator program. Um, and, um, and actually, it, upwards of you know, 200,000 a team. So not an insignificant amount. And then when they end the program, um, the track record for the, the base camp accelerator is actually exceptional. It is very much like the number one Web3 accelerator virtually all projects uh get funded uh not that that's a big barrier as i mentioned earlier but um you know they would the program sort of checks all the business boxes to help uh, help these projects sort of fast track to launch and so the program will be you know it will be uh, it's a program that will help us scale while while we do the sort of the the hard work of like uh you know, building uh, these incubated projects that involves a lot more sort of intensive sort of day-to-day -day, uh, attention. Yeah, that definitely, definitely like, makes a lot of sense. And yeah, that's really interesting sort of difference between the accelerator and the incubator. And so we'd have another follow-up question from Lee who's asked, do you advise projects on getting audits or insist they do them? And then what do you think about the audit landscape slash industry these days? 
Yeah, I think we will most certainly insist on audits. Um, I mean, this is the DeFi space, right? And so I think we have to take security extremely, um, um, you know, it ha we have to take it extremely important, right? Like it's, it's, it's extremely important. So we, we have a partnership with Halburn um, f for us to sort of work with Halburn on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, to sort of help us with our smart contract audits um for incubated projects um you know i think our group our team has spent time actually um in you know developing i think working with some of the like very very uh best uh crypto economics and token engineering firms uh, mainly block science and so you know i think we also keenly understand that like security is not just a matter of sort of the smart contract risk but there's also you know you know risks around um well there's composability risk and then there's you know sort of um system limitations right where do where do the economics breaks where do the where does the system break um you know because because these are complex systems we need to sort of understand like this complexity and so We've spent a lot of time uh, working with the token engineering community over the past few years, working with block science, um, and just understanding how uh, how to sort of design, model, and run simulations to test the security of these networks. And that's beyond the smart contracts. And so, you know, whether, again, whether it's smart contract risk, composability risk, you know, economic risk, uh, systems engineering limitations; those are all things that are very top of mind for us. I think we're we're probably one of the groups that's maybe more aware of um, the security, the wide variety of risk factors uh, than 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 most others. Uh, just just by virtue of again the time that um, you know some of our core team members have spent uh, with block science. Yeah, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense, especially in DeFi. And uh, another question from Lee, who's asked, um, you've mentioned something about launching community-based projects rather than core team projects. And then he's also sort of curious about what sort of trends you guys see for new ways to launch projects. Uh, I think it's a good question. Um, I, I think... There's certainly part of the experiment or the premise that we're running certainly is implying how can we establish some sort of new methodology where the community comes and plugs in and um, and 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 sort of you know goes through a, this process of launching a project, right? So, like traditionally, like you have uh, lean startup and design thinking, these sort of web two sort of methodologies. Um, you know, I think there are methodologies for web three in terms of launching tokens, but how do we like do it in a way where it's the community that comes and plugs in? And I think, you know, there's, there's, there's some sort of like, uh, I think, uh, crowdsourcing kind of, uh, platforms that kind of give some clues right like almost like giving us a, a certain sub dao a, a particular um task or activity in that process right and so i think that is something that will be this i think it won't it won't happen in the first year i imagine but it will be something that we will be i think asking that question and figuring out how can we sort of hand the process over to the community entirely right so it's a good, really, really interesting, good question. I think it'll be, it'll be on our minds for a long time. Yeah, that, that, yeah, definitely sort of really interesting to see how um, you guys potentially like think of different ways to sort of launch projects and sort of get the community more involved from like the start and really get them sort of uh, really hands-on with the project. Um, yeah. 
And so sort of one of the last questions we have is sort of more for the Perth team and it's from Ebb Flow who's asked, can we discuss any updates to the staking process slash pr procedures? And yeah, so I guess I'll take this question. First, first, I just want to say to the New Order team, like, thanks a lot, guys, uh, for all the, the answers and the great, great info. It's a really cool project, and I'll definitely be uh, keeping up with it in the future. Uh, so yeah, about the, st about the staking, that's a really great question, and we've been getting this question a lot because uh, recently gas fees have been really high, and a lot of our users have been discovering that to claim and do other actions in our staking contracts costs like a huge amount. Uh, so we're, we're definitely aware of the problem and we <clears throat> want to do what we can to solve it. Uh, but right now we don't really have a lot of, of options and uh, the, best, the best thing to do right now really unfortunately is just to wait and hope that gas prices go down. <laughs> um, in the future, we will be looking into like maybe some way to solve it uh, more permanently because obviously hoping that gas fees will go down doesn't seem to be a very successful strategy these days. Um, but yeah, so so ebb and flow, sorry, to, I don't really have like a straight answer for you right now, but we're definitely looking into this problem and uh, we have a few major features that we need to roll out for perpetual protocol QRE, our V2, before we can really address this staking issue. Um, but it's definitely on our minds and yeah, users are reporting this like every day. So um, it's something that we're talking about and we're looking for solutions. At the same time, like if people have any ideas, uh, welcome to come and bring them forward. And we'll, we're happy to, to, to discuss it and yeah, try and work on a solution together. So. Just, uh, yeah, let us know if you have any ideas, and otherwise we'll be thinking about how to solve it on our own as well. Yeah, it's just, it's, sorry, it's just like, there's not really much we can sort of do about that right now. And uh, so if anyone else has any questions, just make sure to sort of leave them in the new order AMA question section. Awesome. Well, guys, th thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. We're really excited to be uh, launching and really excited to be working with you guys and your community moving forward, too. So uh, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah this is... I, I think that's pretty much like all for the questions that at least I had and sort of Lee. And then I think that's sort of for the rest of the community. So I think it's sort of, yeah, this sort of is like the end of the EMA now. And just want to say like thank you to Sammy and Eden for coming from New Order and really, really keen to see how New Order sort of like plays out. Cause I think venture DAOs and like incubators are sort of more community owned compared to like some of the ones that are already exist, but they're sort of very gated and you have to be an accredited investor to sort of even participate in them. Uh, so really interested to see how New Order plays out. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks guys. Yeah, man. No, I look forward to working together guys. Yeah. And so yeah, thank you for the audience for coming today as well. And yeah, thank you to everyone for coming and listening. And yeah, it was a really great chat. So thanks a lot. See you guys soon. Peace out. Bye. See ya. Bye.